All right, so we are moving into chapter 5 today, which is one of the more interesting chapters in the book, because it deals with the concept of deception. Uh, deception we're looking at in a very generic sense uh, as telling a lie, bending the truth, omitting facts. It could work in a lot of different ways. Now, there are two different sections or two different ways that we're looking at this. One is through what's called paternalistic deception. The other is non-paternalistic deception. And we're going to look at two articles for each one. In terms of paternalistic deception, uh, we're going to take a look at page 139, Joseph Collins, Should Doctors Tell the Truth? And 141, Cecilia Bach, Lying and Lies to the Sick and Dying. So we'll see basically a pro and a con in favor and against uh, paternalistic deception. And then we'll turn to non-paternalistic deception, where again we'll see two different uh, articles that we're going to be looking at. Uh, one of those will be at page 156, Philip Nelson, Advertising and Ethics. And the other one is at page 159, uh, Truth in the Marketplace from Burton Lyser. So I start off here by kind of telling you this is the difference between paternalistic and non-paternalistic deception. Paternalistic deception is to deceive someone for the benefit of the person being deceived. So I'm lying to you or I'm deceiving you because it's in your best interest. I'm doing it for your own good. Non-paternalistic deception is to deceive for the benefit of the deceiver. In other words, I am lying or deceiving you for my own good. So, let's say, for example, there's an accident victim laying out in the road, and uh, that person has lost a limb, they're bleeding out, but they ask you what their condition is. Well, you don't go up to that person and say, oh, sorry, you've lost a limb, you're, you're bleeding to death, because in their weakened state, the shock of that news like that could kill them. You're going to deceive them. Maybe not outright lie, but you're certainly not going to tell them the worst of it. Your job is to try to keep that person alive. So when you withhold the fact that they've lost a limb, uh, when you withhold how bad things are, trying to help them to hang on until the paramedics come, you are deceiving them, but you're doing it for their own good. That's paternalistic deception. On the other hand, when you walk onto a used car lot, and that guy in his polyester suit comes out, and he tries to sell you this uh, vehicle. Well, he's going to tell you all the good, positive things that he can about that vehicle. But he's not going to tell you any of the bad stuff. Not unless you come fully armed and knowledgeable, just like we talked about last week. Well, so when that person deceives you in some way about this vehicle... They're not doing it for your own good. They're, they're not lying to you for your sake. They're lying to you for their own sake, for their own good, for their own benefit. Uh, because they want to make a commission. And that's non-paternalistic deception. And that's essentially the difference between the two. So we are going to start off here by looking at what we call paternalistic deception. And uh, I want to start with the article from Joseph Collins, Should Doctors Tell the Truth? Essentially, when Collins raises this article, uh, raises this question at the beginning of the article, it uh, seems almost a no-brainer, right? Should doctors tell the truth? Our immediate thought is, yeah, of course they should. I mean, we, we're going to this person with our problem. We're paying them for this knowledge. Of course we want that doctor to tell us the truth. Otherwise, why would we be doing that? But Collins says that actually... It's uh, sometimes a great cruelty and can work against your role as a doctor to be completely honest and to tell the whole truth to a patient. As we saw previously, doctors, they um, take a Hippocratic oath upon entering that medical profession. Nowhere in the Hippocratic oath does it say anything about being truthful. What it does say right at the very beginning is first do no harm. Before you ever do anything to make to help the patient or to make them better, make sure that you don't do anything that's going to make them worse. 
Don't do anything to harm that patient in any way. And Collins says that sometimes telling the whole truth to the patient can perpetuate a great harm for them. So he is definitely a supporter of using paternalistic deception. He feels that this is a uh, something that doctors have in their toolkit that they can use to help and benefit their patient. But he also says you have to know your patient. And there are four basic personality types that uh, we have, according to Collins. First, there are those people that really want to know. There are people who are strong enough mis- uh, physically as well as mentally that no matter what you tell them, they're going to take it. They're going to take it in their stride. They're going to use it to their own advantage to the best that they can. And so those strong souls, they really want to know the truth and they will use it to the best of their ability once they've got it. But Collins says, sadly, those people are few and far between. A lot more people are personality too. Those people who don't want to know, but rather who seek reassurance. And the fact is that there are a lot of people uh, in the world who are like that. They uh, do a lot of background research before they ever go to the doctor. And what they're looking for is not to find out that there's something really wrong with them. Instead, what they're looking for is a pat on the back. So yeah, it's a minor problem. You're right. Take these pills. It'll be gone in a few days. You know, they're looking for reassurance, not to find out what's really going on. There is the third type of person, those people who simply cannot handle the truth. There are people whose mental and physical state are such that if they were to be told the truth, they would simply collapse. Uh, They wouldn't be able to handle it. And so those people, it would be very detrimental to tell the truth to. And then fourthly, you have the hypochondriacs. The hypochondriacs are those people that... um, there's always always seems like there's something wrong with them. They're always running to the doctor every five minutes, but in reality, there's nothing wrong with them at all. Uh, it's all in their head. You know how most people will buy a medical dictionary so they can look up their symptoms and try to self-diagnose. Well, the hypochondriac reads through the dictionary and then believes they've developed the symptoms. Everything they hear about, they've immediately got it. You know, uh, so those are the hypochondriacs. Well, the point for Collins is that if you know your patient, then if you're dealing with a type 1 personality, then there's no reason why you should not be completely honest and tell the whole truth to that person because that is in their best interest and they will use that knowledge to their interest. If you're dealing with a type 4 personality, there's no reason not to tell them the whole truth too. Um, They're not going to believe you, but go ahead and tell them anyway. But if you're dealing with the type 2 or type 3 personality, then those are the people for whom this uh, idea of paternalistic deception is really justified. They're the ones who could greatly benefit by paternalistic deception because they're the ones who could most be harmed by being told the truth. Now, I will point out that in uh, the, the case of Collins, What he says makes a lot of sense, and personally I agree with what he's saying. Uh, But it's very difficult in our modern world. If you go back, you know, even 30 years, their doctor that you have is probably the doctor you've known your entire life, and that person might have even been the one to bring you into this world. So they know you. They know what kind of personality type you are. They know what can be done and what needs to be done. But on the other hand, in our modern world, we don't tend to have big family doctors anymore that have known us our entire lives. We have big clinics, and you go to that clinic, and every time you go in, you see a different doctor. They see you for two minutes. How are they supposed to know what kind of personality type you're dealing with? And so it becomes very difficult if you don't have a doctor who knows you well to be able to practice paternalistic deception effectively. But Collins, of course, writing from that era when 
uh, family doctors were the thing and where doctors really did know their patients, uh, which is the way it should be. But um, writing from that era, of course, he strongly advocates for this idea of paternalistic deception. Now, his article is made up of two examples. One of them uh, is from earlier in his career where he misdiagnoses a case. And uh, because of that, he um, is going to uh, begin to use and pay much more attention to the value of paternalistic deception. And the second case demonstrates just how well and how effective that really is. Many experiences show that patients do not want the truth about their maladies and that it's prejudicial to their well-being to know it. But none that I know is more apposite than that of a lawyer noted for his urbanity and resourcefulness in court. When he entered my consulting room, he greeted me with a bonhomie that bespoke intimacy. But I had met him only twice, once on the golf links many years before and once in court where I was appearing as expert witness prejudicial to his case. He apologized for engaging my attention with such a triviality but he had a pain in one shoulder and arm for the past few months, and though he was perfectly well, he'd been assured of it by physicians in Paris, London, and Brooklyn. His pain was annoying, and he'd made up his mind to get rid of it. That I should not get a wrong slant on his condition, he submitted a number of laboratory reports furnished him by an osteopath to show that secretions and excretions susceptible of chemical examinations were quite normal. His determination seemed to be to prevent me from taking a view of his health which might lead me to counsel his retirement. He was quite sure that anything like a thorough examination was unnecessary, but he submitted to it. It revealed intense and extensive disease of the kidneys. The pain in the network of nerves of the upper left arm was a manifestation of the resulting auto-intoxication. I felt it incumbent upon, uh, upon him to tell him that his condition was such that he should make a radical change in his mode of life. I told him if he would stop work, spend the winter in Honolulu, and go to, on a diet suitable to a child of three years, and give up exercise, he could look forward confidently to a recovery that would permit a life of usefulness and activity in his profession. He assured me that he could not believe that one who felt no worse than he did should have to make such a radical change in his mode of life. He impressed upon me that I should realize he was the kind of person who had to know the truth. His affairs were so diversified, his commitments so important, that he simply must know. Completely taken in, I explained to him the relationship between the pain from which he sought relief and the disease, the degeneration that was going on in the excretory mechanisms of his body and how they were struggling to repair themselves, uh, how the procedure of recovery could be facilitated. But the light of life began to flicker from the fears that my words engendered, and within two months it sputtered and died out. He was the last person in the world to whom the truth should have been told. Had I lied to him and then intrigued with his family and friends, he might be alive today. So in this case, this is early in um, Colin's career. He hasn't quite figured out personality types as well as he should yet. But this guy comes in and he's a lawyer. He's, very, he's used to being very bold, very brash in his approach. And so he kind of bowls Collins over and makes him believe that he's one of these type 1 personalities. Um, the, the people that really know the truth or that want to know the truth. I have to know. But if he'd stopped and thought about it, he would have realized that at the very least, this guy is a type 2 personality. Because he brought in all of these other reports. He's saying, look, here's what these other doctors have said. So all this guy was really looking for was a pat on the back. He was looking for reassurance that, yeah, it's a minor issue, it'll go away. In actuality, as it turns out, this guy was really a type 3 personality. Because being taken in, Collins does reveal the whole truth to this man. But what is the end result of doing so? Well, the end result is that this guy basically throws up his arms in defeat. His mind can't cope with what he's being told. And this guy ends up dying considerably earlier than he needed to because Collins told the truth to him and he wasn't able to handle it. And so Collins blames himself for the death of this man, the early death of this man, because he should have diagnosed properly what personality type he was, but he didn't. And because of that, this man ends up <clears throat> not being able to handle the truth that he was given and ultimately ending up suffering uh, and dying because he was told the truth. 
And so Collins believes that many times telling the whole truth to the patient is a tremendous cruelty. Well, later on in his career, he wants to demonstrate to us now, here's how good, here's how effective paternalistic deception ultimately can be. So he talks about this man of 50, um, who after 25 years of devotion to painting, decided that penury and old age were incompatible for him. Some of his friends had forsaken art for advertising, and he followed their lead, and in five years he was ready to gather the first ripe fruits of his labor. When he attempted to do so, he was so immobilized by pain and rigidity that he had to forego work. One of those many persons who assumed responsibility lightly assured him that if he would put himself in the hands of a certain osteopath, he would soon be quite fit. The assurance, though, was without foundation. He uh, consulted a physician who, without examining him, proceeded to treat him for a minor ailment. Within two months, his appearance gave such concern to his family that he was persuaded to go to a hospital where the disease was quickly detected, and he was at once submitted to surgery. When he had recovered from the operation, learning that I was in the country of his adoption, he asked to see me. He had not been able, he said, to get satisfactory information from the surgeon or the physician. All he could gather from them was that he would have to have supplementary x-ray or radium treatment. What he desired was to get back to his business, which was on the verge of success, and he wanted assurance that he could do so. He got it. More than that, he got elaborate explanation of what surgical intervention had accomplished, but not a word of what it failed to accomplish. A year of activity was vouchsafed him, and during that time he put his business in such shape that its eventual sale provided a modest competency for his family. It was not until the last few weeks that he knew the nature of his malady. Months of apprehension had been spared him by the deception, and he had been better able to do his work, for he was buoyed by the hope that his health was not beyond recovery. Had he been told the truth, black despair would have been thrown over the world in which he moved, and he would have carried on with corresponding ineffectiveness. So, this man, uh, he's recognizing him as a type 3 personality. And so what Collins does is he gives him the information that he needs to receive. He tells him about what the surgery has accomplished, the, the lack of pain that he's going to be feeling, uh, the, the better able to do his work that he will be, and so on. But what he does leave out is the fact that it hasn't ultimately cured it, that this man is still going to probably die within a year. But by leaving out that one piece of information, he allows this individual to hold on to that sense of hope and to go on and actually enjoy and live the life that he has left. Had he told the truth, the whole truth to this person and put that time stamp upon him, then at that point this guy would have, like that lawyer all those years ago, thrown up his arms in defeat, and he would have died even sooner, and his quality of life for what time he had left would have been next to nothing. And so Collins clearly demonstrates here that it is much better to uh, use paternalistic deception at times to benefit the patient than it is to completely tell the whole truth to that patient. And we'll talk more about this in the second video.